Okay, Year 11, I'm about to go on with the next exercise or next chapter, chapter 12. This won't take us very long. There are only four exercises here, but it's work that is new. Some of the stuff you will be able to do quite easily, like exercise 1201. Some of the other stuff, once you get an understanding, you'll find that it's pretty easy. So let's have a look at some of the things we need to know. Random variables, definitions of discrete, continuous, uniform, finite, and infinite variables. Uh, let's just jump right into it and have a look down here. So you get a terminology list here. It's going to be pretty reasonable. Is, is, it would be reasonable for you to go through and have a look at those and read them, maybe even write some notes. But I'm going to take you through it. So we've already done data when we did it in year 10 and we talked about the two different types of data and in that there's discrete data which we're going to talk about here and discrete data is finite it has an end so for example how many brothers and sisters do you have how many cars are there uh, how many TVs are in your house. It is an, an exact amount. It's just a whole number. And we could discuss or uh, have a, an argument or a discussion about whether or not you can have half or parts of brothers and sisters or hearts or parts of a TV. But we're just going to confine ourselves to the fact that you either have one, two, three, none. They're whole numbers. However, continuous data... is infinite and continuous data is something that doesn't end and is usually a measurement so how tall someone is how fast they can swim 50 meters or run 100 meters uh, how heavy something is how long it takes for uh, someone to build a house or how long it takes someone to drive from Armadale to Urala. Those are continuous measurements. They're infinite. Over here, when we talk about these in terms of random variables, so these are things that can vary. Discrete random variables, so discrete random variables are things that occur randomly but are whole numbers so for example if um, i went and i asked uh, every student students in the school how many brothers and sisters they had in their family in their immediate family that would be a collection of discrete data and it's random i'm just going around asking randomly whereas if i went around the school and i asked students their height that would be random but also it would be continuous. So when we talk a random variable, and we have a look here, random variable is a variable that can take on different values depending on the outcome. So if I picked a student at random and said, how many brothers and sisters do you have? That is a discrete random variable. I picked a student at random from the school list and asked their height, that would be a continuous random variable. So that's what we're talking about here and you might like to write a definition of that a discrete random variable is a variable whose values are specific and can be listed i prefer the word finite so here we go you need to be able to associate whether or not these are discrete or continuous so let's have a look A film's critics rating from zero to four stars. I suppose you could give a half star, but to me, that's discrete. Speed of a car, that's continuous. They can go for anything. The sum rolled on a pair of dice. Well, we can either get a one and a one, which is two, that's the smallest, or a six and a six and 12, all the numbers in between, I think that's pretty much discrete. Uh, the winning ticket 
in a raffle. I think that's discreet as well because there are set numbers. You can't have two, ticket 2.3478. The weights of parcels at the post office, continuous. You can see where this is going. So you should be able to finish that. Now, when we write the set of values for a discrete random variable, we're going to be using this symbol. And when we write it, we're going to use X to represent, and it's a capital X, all the different discrete random variables in there. So the number of daughters in a one-child family. Well, you could have no daughters, or you can have one daughter. There are all the different things that can happen, and that is discrete. The number of sixes on 10 rolls of a die. So if I roll a dice 10 times, or a die 10 times, how many sixes? Well, I could get none. I could get one six. I could get two. I could get three. I'm just going to go dot, 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 all the way up to, I could get 10 sixes. I mean, what are the chances? One on six to the power of 10. The number of people aged over 50 in a group of 20 people. Well, I could have no one aged over 50. I could have one. I could have two. I could have three all the way up. All 20 of a group of people could be aged above 50. The number of days if it rains in March. Well, I could have zero days where it rains in March. I could have one day. I could have two days. I could have three days. Hmm, how many days are there in March? Because I could have a cataclysmic event and I could have, like in the Bible, the flood. It could rain for 40 days and 40 nights. How many days are there in March? Well, you need to know. 30 days have September, April, June, and November. All the rest have 31, except February, which has 28 days clear and 29 on each leap year. So you get the idea now. The sum of two numbers rolled on a dice. Now, we already said what these are. If I roll two numbers on a dice, if I roll two dice and add them together, the lowest number I can get is two. So two. And then I can get a two and a one. Oh, I can get three, four, and the highest I can get is 12. So that's how we write all the set of possible values. And that is exercise 12 by one. Understanding what a discrete random variable is. And that's it in question two. That is what a discrete random variable. Okay, now we need to move on. Discrete probability distributions. Essentially, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put things in a frequency distribution table, but it's not a frequency distribution table, it's a probability distribution table. And because all the elements are discrete, it's going to be pretty easy. So we have to list all the probability values for each thing. Now, if I take a discrete probability distribution, I can display it, and this is important, I can display it as a table, as a graph, or even a set of ordered pairs. Now, if I write it as a set of ordered pairs, I can then plot it. And if I can plot it, we it's a function, as long as it only has one value, one unique uh, probability or y value for every x value. Um, so I get what we call a discrete probability function. So, I'm going to go through and do some examples, but there are some other things you need to know. You need to know that you can have, or you have these probability, uh, these properties. Um, every, all the values of X must be mutually exclusive. Otherwise, we don't get a probability, 
a discrete probability distribution or function. All probabilities must add up to one. Oh, we already knew that from probability. And each value of each x of the discrete thing happening must have a probability between zero and one. It must be a fraction or a decimal or a percentage. And finally, we can have a uniform probability distribution function, which means all of the probability distribution functions, uh, all of the probabilities are equal. So now I'm going to show you how you write it up. So you make sure you write all those notes up, and I'm just going to do the simplest one. I'm going to write um, a probability distribution function for rolling a dice. So when I write the probability distribution function for rolling a dice, and you can see here, here's one similar. So I'm going to write all the x values and I'm going to write p of x. So x, and then underneath I'm going to write the probability of x happening. So when I roll a dice, and this is a probability, a discrete probability, what do we call it? A probability distribution, discrete probability distribution, a DDP, a DPD, of rolling a die. Well, I can get a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. And the chance of each of those things happening, well, one on six, 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 one on six. Now, that is a probability distribution. I've written it. Now, go back here. How can we write it? Remember the three different ways. I can write it as a table, which is what I've just done, or a graph, or a set of order pairs, or I can graph it. So let's go back and do that for this, this discrete probability distribution, which I've written as a table. So there it is, a discrete probability distribution table. Now, Let's write them as ordered uh, as a graph. Well, imagine I've got along here, and I'm just going to draw a little histogram, and that's a sixth, so that's p of x. And over here, I'm going to have x, and I can have one, two, three, four. Five, need a bit more. Six. And here I go. There's one, two, three, four, five. There you go. There's a graph, it's just a histogram where all the probabilities are the same. If I wanted to draw it as a function, again, I'd have to write down all the ordered pairs. And the ordered pairs are 1 and a sixth, 2 and a sixth, and so on. So you get 1, 2, 3, four, five, six, and here's my x and my y. I've got them as ordered pairs, and I'm just going to get a six to six to six. I plot my points, and I join them. Now, that is a probability distribution function, because it's a function. Look at it. It's a function for a set amount of limits. It's from one to six. It's, there it is as a graph. There it is as a table. 
And here I'm starting to write it out as an ordered pairs or a set of ordered pairs. Now, if I wanted to write that as a function, look at here, we write it as a set piece as I go up here. Have a look at this. This is how you write it as a function. So p of x, so oh, so if we were writing what we did, p of x for each discrete variable, x, so one, two, for my roll in a dice, equals, well, it only exists, all right, from one to six. So it equals a sixth for x equal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and it equals 0 for all other values. And that's how I write it. That's the function, that's the function of P of X. Okay, so let's have a look at these. I mean, hopefully you, you've gone and written some notes on this. Once you do that and you see it, these questions are pretty easy. Draw a probability distribution table for the sum of two numbers rolled on a dice. So the first thing you need to know, you have to draw that little table up. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And one, two, three, four, five, six. And what am I doing? I'm adding them. One and one is two, two and one is three, four, five, six, seven, two and one is three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Remember, I'm adding these two, so this is four and one, five, four and two, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So they're all the different things, but I had to write a probability distribution for that. So I write x, well, what can x equal? Any of these things in here. So I've got x equaling 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And my p of x, the probability of each of those, well, how many type ways can I get that? Well, here I've got six times six things. I've got 36 things, and there's only one way I can get a two. So the probability of that, one on 36. How many ways can I get a three? Two on 36. How many ways, and I'm just looking down the diagonal here, see there? That's how many ways I can get a four. That's how many ways a five. That's how many ways a six. So here we go. Oh, how many ways can I get a four? 3 on 36. Can a 5? 4 on 36. 6 and 6 on 36. And then it starts going down again. 1, one 2, 3. Idiot. 5 on 36. Seven's my middle one. 5 on 36. 6 on 36. Now it starts going down. 5 on 36. 4 on 36, 3 on 36, 2 on 36, 1 on 36. And there's my probability distribution table. And you can simplify that, but I like to see it as a whole because if I were to add all of these up, it must equal, well, hold on, sigma. It must, if I add all those up, of all those P of X's, 
No, I'll get rid of that equal sign. I add all those up. It m must equal one. That's one of the properties of probability, <coughs> a discrete probability distribution. So that's all you're doing here. Now, <coughs> sometimes the things are set. So when tossing one coin, tossing two coins, three coins, that's pretty easy. Remember, that will have two outcomes or two different things. Um, two times two, that'll have four different things, but depending on how you write them, heads, whether heads or tails uh, is uh, important for you, but you're going to write them as an ordered pair. So uh, what are we discussing? Oh, the number of heads, the number of heads. Well, if I toss, here we go, 2A, and I'm writing an ordered pair, I can either get no heads or one head. What's the chance we get no heads? That's a half. What's the chance we get one head? That's a half. Note the probabilities must add up. If I toss two coins, well, I better draw a little bit quick table for this. So I can get a head and a head, a head and a tail, a tail and a head, or a tail and a tail. Well, so what can I get in terms of heads? Well, I can get no heads. That's right here. What's the chance of that happening? One in four. I can get one head, that's these two, that one and that one, and even though I can write it as a half, I prefer to write it as two on four, because I like to see, and what about getting two heads? That's one in four, because I like to see that these probabilities add up to one, and I can quickly look down and see that they add up to one. You try the next one, so the probability of, um, Tossing three coins, we can get no heads, one head, two heads, or three heads. And I reckon you're better off leaving them all as a value out of eight, because when you toss three coins, two times two times two is eight. You're going to have three different things. As you go through all these, you just keep doing the same sort of thing. So let's, uh, we've done that one, we did that up there, you can go and have a look at that. But I want you to now, have a look at this. So what do they talk about here? Uh, actually, now I might do question four for you first. So if I write up a probability distribution table, so they've given it to me as a function. So they've said the probability distribution, so here's question four, is x minus two on six, but it's only for when x equals three, four, and five. So I've got, I'm gonna write up the table, three, four, and five. Now, if I put it in here, if I put those numbers into that equation, my P of x becomes three minus two on six. Well, three minus two is one, one on six. What about if I put four in there? Four minus two is two, two on six. 5 minus 2 is 3, 3 on 6. And I quickly look along there to see to see if those three things add up to 6, uh, add up to 1, they do. So this is a probability distribution because P of X, the sum, oh, the sum of P of X equals 1 on 6 plus 2 on 6 plus 3 on 6 equals 1. And hence, it's a probability distribution table or distribution. Okay. Uh, now, then it has this funny thing here. So, and this is just uh, notation. So P of X greater than 3. So... P, capital X, for all X values greater than three. Do we have an equal sign there? No. So, and, yep, there we go. Oh, okay. 
Well, what's the probability of greater than three? Well, is three greater than three? No, it's equal to three. Is four greater than three? Yeah, what's the probability of that? Two on, two on six. Is five greater than three? Yeah, what's the probability of that? Three on six. Well, the probability of this distribution of getting an, an, a discrete variable greater than three is five on six. What about, well, if it goes back to the beginning, I knew it would. Okay, sorry about that. It does that when I resize. we have just got to be a little bit careful. So, what's the probability less than three? Well, the probability of x less than three well, is three less than three? No, it's equal to that. Are there any other values less than three? No, the probability of that is zero. Uh, am I looking at the right one? I think I just answered, oh, that was question six. Uh, P of X being odd, so that was wrong. P of X, come on, give me my eraser. P of X being odd is odd. So what's the probability the discrete random variable is odd? Is 3 an odd number? Yeah, it is. 1 on 6. Is 4 an odd number? No. Is 5 an odd number? Yeah, 3 on 6. 1 on 6 plus 3 on 6? 4 on 6. I'd like to leave it like that. You can bring it down to 2 on 3. That's up to you. And the last question. The P of X be, being between 1 and 4. So P... 1, x, 4. Was it equal to 4? Yes, it can be equal to 4. So, there's no numbers 1, there's no numbers 2. Is 3 in there? Yep, 1 on 6. Is 4 in there? Yeah, it can be equal to that. Four on, uh, 2 on 6. Is 5 in there? No. So it's just 3 on 6, or a half. So essentially, all you're doing is going through, if this goes back to the beginning again, um, is going through, well, may as well go over this again. So discrete random variables, finite, set them out. Make sure you have a definition of that. Make sure you can classify continuous or discrete. Make sure you can write down all the different things that can happen in a discrete uh, random variable, all the different things that can be. Make sure you write some notes on what a probability, a discrete probability distribution is, and make sure you can draw it as a table, a graph, or a set of ordered pairs, or indeed write it as a function, and make sure you're okay with that notation. Uh, I'm not going to do any more of these questions. They're not that hard unless you uh, send me an email and I'll do a quick video on that. Uh, as you get towards the end of these, you can see that they're writing them. They're writing them as uh, like a set of ordered pairs or like a function. That's because they are, it's a probability function. And remember, if it's a function, uh, all the probabilities have got to add up to one. It's a, and we're going to talk about a, later on a probability density function and they've got to add up to one. So uh, good luck with those and just keep working away.